Hey guys, I hope you've all been keeping well. It's been quite a while since we last recorded an episode of the Women's Rugby Show, so it's great to be back and thank you for pressing that play button. Now, as you all know, we love to cover all aspects of the women's game, from the training sessions to post-match analysis to the big games and even pre-season. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I've always wanted to know what it takes to be a top rugby player, but I've never actually had the chance to find out how. However, today I'm in luck as I've managed to get an exclusive insight into the pre-season of a Tyrrell's Premier and international player. So today, Jay Conker will be showing me how she and her teammates train during the summer. Now, for those of you who don't know, away from the rugby pitch, Jade is a personal trainer and her company Apex Training and Performance caters to a wide range of clients from elite athletes to people who just want to stay fit and healthy so she really does know what she's talking about and afterwards I'll be speaking to Jade to find out how Queens are shaping up ahead of the season. So Jay, thanks so much for inviting us to today's training session. How's pre-season been, been for you so far? Yeah, it's been really tough to say the least. Um, glad it's Saturday. Um, got a bit of time off now. Um, but yeah, really, really good. It's nice to get back with the team and see how things are going to progress in the new season. Have you been able to relax much? Um, I don't think there's ever such a thing as relaxing. You've always got like your next kind of goal on the job and what you're going to focus on. So had a bit of downtime, but really happy and excited to get back into it now. Okay, now tell us a little bit about Apex Training and Performance. Yeah, um, started our PT company, we decided to call it Apex Training and Performance because the initial standard for ATP, so we kind of got our inner geeks in to be like the highest energy molecule and Apex being reaching the highest point. So we wanted to kind of get people to evolve into the best versions of themselves. So it's like each individual person, so it's not, you know, trying to get the next, you know, world class athlete, it's just every day trying to be the best of yourself. So you have a real variety of clientele, I can imagine. Yeah, we've got people that just want to get a bit fitter in life. We've got, um, I've got a client training for a sprint triathlon, um, just got some, got some rugby players, which obviously comes in really handy. So yeah, a good variety of, you know, different work-ons as well. So do you train with any of your teammates with your personal training? Um, I get some of them to do the weekly workouts and stuff and get them to send in videos, which is good. And we always kind of bounce ideas off each other anyway, um, especially Leah Lyon. She helps me a lot with some good forwards and code ideas for the scrum and stuff, which is always good. So, yeah, hopefully I'll get them through their paces a bit more. It's normally stretching I get them involved in. <laughs> OK, great stuff. And Emma, you'll be assisting Jay today, so thanks for joining us. And you yourself, you're a rugby player? Yeah, rugby player too, and much lower trainer. level than Jade, and a personal trainer. Yeah, <laughs> okay, good stuff. So, can you both explain what we'll be doing here today? Yeah, Emma's going to be put through her paces. <laughs> um, so we've got kind of three different kind of stations. Um, we've got one station which is going to be a bit of agility, a bit of cardio, and a bit of a core work on. And then the second station will be more kind of rugby specific type of exercises. And then we've got a bit of a sweaty conditioning finisher at the end, um, which is really good to get that high intensity work in. Looking a little bit nervous, Emma. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay, well, I'm really excited to see it in action, so let's get going. So, Jane and Emma, the stage is all yours. Just talk us through the workouts that we're going to be doing here today. So, the first bit we're going to do, we're going to do some agility ladders. So, obviously, in rugby, you've got to use your feet to try and get around defenders. As much as I like route one over the top of someone, it is always more beneficial to use your feet. So, we're going to get Emma through uh, doing some of the agility ladders, really seeing how the different ways you can go through it and different kind of ways you can move your feet. Yep. You used to doing fast feet? Uh, I try. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're particularly fast, but this will make them better. I'm sure you'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> and what else do we have going on here as well? There's, there's quite a variety here, isn't there? Yeah, so we're going to go into then squat thrusters. So this is, again, really good. We're going to use a band for a bit of resistance. Um, it's going to be really good to get down low, especially when you're lifting in a line-out. So we've got to really, really lift up with a band as well. So it's good fluid movement to get up. So we're going to put Emma through some squat thrusters as well. And then we're going to go into some core work with the rugby balls. This is just focusing on your bare crawl position. It's also quite a, it's quite tough on the wrists, so yeah. also kind of like goes into some passing, getting that strength through the wrists. So we're gonna kind of crawl over the rugby balls, which is definitely a lot harder than it looks. I can imagine, <laughs> um, yeah. Then we're gonna go into medicine ball slams. This is good to get the heart pumping. It's good to, you know, really throw a weight above your head to then slam it into the ground. Um, again, going into rugby, you want to really tackle those opponents <laughs> and hit them into the ground. And then 
we're going to move into bear crawl pull throughs. So again, you're going to see lots of this bear crawl positioning. We're going to be nice, strong, flat back, like you're in a scrum, like you're in a ruck. It kind of goes into all aspects of rugby, but we're going to pull a weight through to really work on that rotational stability as well. Fantastic. Well, let's start. Okay, so we're on to the second load of circuits now. So how are these different to the first lot we just did and what do, what do these focus on? So the first round looked a bit of agility. It looked a bit of bear crawl positioning, staying nice and strong over the balls and then just some kind of like normal movements that you can do in the gym, some squats, some squat thrusters, some med ball slams, really good for getting your aggression out and then just bear crawl pull throughs with a weight. So again, yeah, we could just pull the weight through. These ones are going to be much more rugby specific. Again, really attack that core. We'll keep banging on about the bear crawl positioning because in rugby, it's super important so we've got the first exercise stir the pot it's again another great exercise you can do in the gym you just need a swiss ball um, so we're going to focus on getting our arms on keeping our core nice and strong and then we've got a band to progress it so emma's going to have a band round her on the second round just so we can put a bit of resistance around her to see if she can stay nice and strong over the ball which should really challenge you this one over here to me looks really interesting and quite difficult just explain this one i'm guessing that's for core stability yeah, so we're going to do single arm dumbbell row. So it's a great exercise that you can do in the gym. Um, quite a lot of it, you focus, again, you're in that kind of bear crawl height. You've got an arm forward, you're holding yourself, and you're really working your lats on this. So we're going to be pulling the weight up. So if you think when you're stealing a rugby ball, you really want to be strong over that ball, you want to be able to pull that weight up over that. Um, but again, because we've got the tackle shield involved in there, that's going to really, really challenge Emma to stay nice and, nice and strong through her core. So it'll be exciting to see how that one pans out. Perfect. Well, let's see how it goes. So we're going to now do a bit of speed to the breakdown, just to explain this one for people who don't know what it is. Uh, so we're going to get Emma to wear a band around her waist. So the first element of it is going to be a bit of a resisted sprint. So she's really got to drive her legs through. Again, like in rugby, she's going to have to drive her legs through the contact, drive her legs up, especially when you get a bit more tired. So she's giving her that extra pull. Um, we've got three different colours. Um, so we're going to run up. Last minute decision making, going to call a colour. Going to get her to try and work on those feet that we worked on earlier and um, go to a cone and then we're going to really focus on getting low and speed through the breakdown so when you're running up to a ruck we're going to run completely clear it out as fast as we can so we're going to run change the direction squared up and then crawl through is this what you do a lot of your teammates as well um, it's one of the drills that we come we've got loads of different drills that um kind of 
equate to the same same meaning. Um, but this is one that I've known for quite a few years, which I've always quite liked. It's a bit fun. It's a bit that you can have a bit of banter with your pair, really pulling them back and getting them to work hard. So yeah, it should be good. Have fun, Emma. I will. <laughs>Emma, you're doing really, really well and we're on to the last three workouts now. So what have you got planned now, Jade? So now we've got a bit more conditioning, really get the lungs pumping. Um, so the first one we're going to do, we're going to do army crawl. So the first round, she's just going to crawl up to the cone. We're going to stay really nice and low to the ground and do a 180 turn to then crawl back. That just kind of replicates when you've been tackled, protecting the ball. You want to stay nice and low to the ground. And then when you turn to present the ball, you really want to stay close to the ground again. So we're just going to focus on that. Second time we go into it, Emma's going to have a ball. She's going to crawl with the ball and again when she tries to do the 180 turn I'll just put a bit of resistance push it a few times and then she'll go back again so just try and really look onto the ball and it should be quite difficult I'll try and keep hold of the ball <laughs> I'm sure you'll be feeling it after this yeah. okay nearly there so these two workouts behind us just explain what these two are so the first one we're going to go into is called malcolm's why they're called malcolm's i've absolutely no idea and um, so this again is just working on like a repeated effort and um, going 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 so we're going to get up we're going to run 10 meters we're going to uh, do a down up because rugby's full of burpees that's all we ever do we're going to run back through we're going to hit the cylinder to get that ta tackle in then we're going to get straight to our feet because we want to focus on that bounce time to get off the ground quickly run to the faraway cone do another down up of course aren't we <laughs> then we're going to run back through to the middle and then Emma's going to be over try to jackle the ball out with a bit of resistance so again it's working on different elements in rugby building her up getting her a bit out of breath and making her work under fatigue I think it sounds a great workout so let's see how we get on Emma And what will be the final workout today for Emma? So the final workout is a repeated effort. So again, it's all about just keeping going, going, going. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Emma starting on essentially the try line. She's going to run out five metres. She's going to hit the bag. So she's going to drive me forward as though she's got a ball in her hand. She's really pumping her legs to go through. Once she's finished hitting me, she's then going to backpedal back to the line. Again, do another down up. And then she's going to run out to the 22 metres, do a shuttle and run back again. So that's just one. And then we go through several phases of that Amazing. good, good luck, luck Emma <laughs>so so well that looks so challenging how are you feeling tired but excellent really good really challenging really rugby specific it was excellent what do you think was the hardest if you could pick one i would say the malcolms and the bear crawl over the rugby balls just because the core stability needed for that and there's really no way of cheating that one
Yeah, it was actually making me tired just watching it. <laughs> but we can take a breather now and then, Jade, you can tell me all about your plans for the coming season. Look forward to it. Jay, thank you so much for joining me today. How has pre-season been for you so far? Um, pre-season's been really tough. Um, obviously, it's the time you want to really get the fitness levels like as high as you possibly can. Lots of high-intensity team games, team training, um, especially in the gym as well. It's a really heavy phase that we're doing. We're doing an eccentric phase at the moment, so it's really making sure the doms are visible every single day. Um, so, yeah, it's really good, but really challenging. Have you had any time to relax at all? Um, we had a bit of downtime. Um, I managed to go on holiday to the south of France for a week, which was lovely. Um, but even while I was there, um, I knew we had fitness tests. And when we got back, I knew that I very much liked being in a routine. So happy to be back and back in a routine. Are you one of those athletes that looks forward to pre-season or is there always sort of a sense of dread a little bit? I think it goes both. There's obviously always the dread for the fitness tests, um, but in the grand scheme of things, like very excited to always be back with the squad and get ready for the season and you know set those goals and then do everything we can to get ready to smash them. Looking back to last season, for you personally, how did you find it went? Um, so it was my first year with Harlequins. Um, obviously, came into a team that's you know really well known in the Tyrrells Premiership. So. To have made the final the year previously, obviously we want to make the final again, so to be involved in us getting to the final was absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously the outcome in the final is not what we wanted, but that's how you build character, it's how you build resilience and hopefully we'll go into the next season, well, the season coming and be able to get the title. I was actually quite privileged because I got to go to the semi-final you guys against Loughborough, saw you score your tries, you were on fire that game. What did you learn from that game as opposed to the final? Oh, that game. I honestly think the semi-final was one of the hardest games I think I've ever played in my life, and that includes international and club standard. I feel like both teams wanted every single inch on the pitch, so that whole game was just something that was you know, really hard to explain, but absolutely exhausting. And going into the final, we didn't start like we, like we did in the semi-final, and I think that as a team we need to take that forward this year. Um, we can't have that chance to switch off in the first 30, 40 minutes because look what happens. Like, you end up being 24 nil down and um, people start to you know lose a bit of faith but then come out at half time I think the fact we did manage to come out at half time and um, score um, some tries and really come out shows that we are capable so we just need to figure out as a team how we can then change that to work for the whole game and bring in what we did to the semi-final into the final. Yeah. What would you say as a team you took away from that final? I can't imagine um, you know, it's quite difficult to walk away when you're disappointed, but you do always learn from those disappointments. Yeah, like obviously, first and foremost, heartbreak. Um, it was obviously really hard to not come away with the win, like, but that works, like one team's got to win. There's one ball, two teams, and the outcome depends on what each team does. And to be honest, we didn't step up in that final and Saracens had a great game and they deserved the win. Um, so for us to take away, it's just that we can't let our foot off the gas and coming into the season, every single person needs to work on that pitch. It's like all about all 23 having a good day every day. So that's not just the 15 that's on the pitch, it's the game changers as well. It's everyone around you and just having that support. Where do you think Saracens topped it for that final? Where do you think they've got you guys? To be fair, like they just came at us. They absolutely came out the blocks firing and from that first whistle, they literally were in our faces the entire time. Um, it literally came out, they were running at us, they were really like, you know, fighting for those holes and to be fair, they fronted up more than we did, so they got, they got the front foot. Okay, so looking ahead now, fresh new season, fresh new start. What are your goals for this season and also what are the goals for the team in general? Uh, me personally, it's just you know going to be those little improvements every day. Um, hopefully, stay uninjured for the season, which will be nice. Done lots of work uh, in rehab uh, respect, in an SNC respect. So hopefully, keep building myself up to you know really be solid as fit as I can for the season coming, and hopefully get you know lots of instances up my ball carrying, up my tackles in the games. So. Each game kind of comes, I set my own little goals for each game, which will be good. And then as a team, it'll just be, you know, take each game as it comes, you know, put a performance in each game. And then hopefully that will lead up to us qualifying for the final again and then hopefully stepping up in the final. Talking about injury, you suffer with some concussion. So I guess this pre-season has been a little bit more challenging than previous ones for you. Yeah, so I got concussed in the final. Um, it was probably the 
worst concussion I've had in the respect that it took me a long time to become symptom free and then I had a two weeks mandatory rest so especially for me who is always looking for the next training session it was really hard to try and switch off um, on that downtime. Um, so yeah, hopefully this season, well obviously pre-season's been a bit of a shock to the system, but again, absolutely fantastic. So hopefully just keep moving forward in a positive light. And there's some new signings for Harlequins ladies. So what do you think they're going to add to the team? Yeah, we just had some back row signings. We had Jada Franco, who's coming over from Italy. So she plays open side. Um, so I played against her when we play the Six Nations um, for Scotland. She's absolutely fantastic. She's a really nice person as well. We've definitely spoken a lot. We're actually swapping one of our international shirts together. So it'll be nice for her to come along. And um, she's an incredible ball carrier and she's really powerful. And it'll be really good to kind of play off her and learn from her as well. And then we've got Sarah Beckett, who's a back row from England coming. Um, she's coming from Waterloo. So she's played in the Premier so it'll be really good to see what she brings to Harlequins again another big physical player so I think they'll definitely both be a force to be reckoned with and going forward as well for your team I mean what are you hoping will be the outcome this year I mean obviously everyone wants to go for that trophy but how do you think the team are going to do this season I'm really positive with the team this season like so far in pre-season everyone has literally stepped up they've got their they're putting the hard yards in and everyone knows that we're working towards reaching to that final again but again it's just like I said we have to just take each game at a time and if we can improve each game then we're just going to get better and better and then hopefully we will deserve a place and earn our place in the final because at the end of the day yes like Saracens and Harlequins have been in the final for the last two years but that is absolutely not to say that that's going to be the case you've got other cracking teams in this premiership so we need to earn our place so hopefully we're going to do that throughout this season. Are there any teams or any fixtures that you're specifically really looking forward to? Well obviously I loved playing against Loughborough in the semi-final. I thought it was so difficult and so challenging and you know that's what you want in a rugby game. Um, you want to literally crawl off that pitch after the 80 minutes knowing that you couldn't physically do anymore. So mm -hmm. yeah it's always great um, to play against Loughborough and quite a lot of my Scotland teammates play for Loughborough as well so always excited to play them. And I've never actually played Wasps yet because I was injured for both their games so excited to play Wasps as well. Amazing. But not only are you a talented athlete as well as that you're a personal trainer and you have your own company Apex Training and Performance. So just explain to people why you started the company and what you offer your clients. I started the company just because like I love the health and fitness side of things. I love like what exercise does to you. Like not just physically but mentally as well. And I think there's so many different things out there that are telling you different things. And I was like, well, you know, hopefully I can practice what I preach and trying to build up this kind of business to be like, just be the best version of yourself, like evolve into that. And it's not about being somebody else or what you can or can't do. It's about kind of those small margins, the small things you do every day to build yourself into that kind of person that you want to be. And um, so I kind of did that on the side. So I was like, I want to do something outside of rugby, but still kind of focuses in on the same thing. So now it's just, and online, we've got online programs that we that we sell. So it's really getting to know each individual person, seeing what they like, dislike, what they want to achieve, and then I do face to face stuff as well. And that could be some morning boot camps. It could be you know PT sessions in the gym, or it could be like pre season at a rugby club. So I've got quite a varied amount at the moment. But yeah, it's just about helping people kind of feel better in themselves. And that must keep you quite busy. So when generally do you do your personal training away from training for yourself as a rugby player? It genuinely varies on the weekly schedule, so obviously being in Harlequin is very fortunate to have a weekly schedule which includes daytime training, so I will, I'm a very organised person, like colour coded uh, calendars, everything, so it could be early morning sessions if that's what's on that day, but it would just be working around the day, so like Wednesday we're off from training, so that's when I've got most of my clients on that day, but around that it's mostly mornings or an afternoon here or there, just kind of what suits the client and what suits my schedule as well. With your clients, I can imagine you've got quite a big clientele from people who just want to stay fit and healthy to elite athletes. So talk about how your workouts vary. So I get my clients to fill out um, quite a thorough of few forms and I'm like I know it's repetitive but it gives me the best kind of information and in that case then I find out what they like and dislike because at the end of the day if I prescribe exercises you dislike you're just not going to enjoy it it's not going to be something that you stick to so I'll find out what they like and um, hopefully devise a plan that they can enjoy and I get them to look over it send it back things that they want changed and kind of put my kind of ideas into it but explain why like so it's not just I've given you that because I said so and it's hard it's very much like this is good for this and this is good for 
for that. Um, but that'll work depending on their goals as well. So it's just wanting to lose a bit of weight, get a bit fitter, to then wanting to train for a sprint triathlon. Obviously two very different programmes. Um, so yeah, it's just about getting to know each client and then looking at the nutrition aspect side of things. Um, I don't really believe in meal plans and stuff because you wouldn't really stick to them. It's all about educating and kind of giving that knowledge and getting people to learn so then it's not just when they finish working with me that they work, they're going to follow a meal plan for the rest of their life. It's very much going to, hopefully they'll have learned the tools to then be able to maintain and then improve um, themselves out of that and just live a healthy and active lifestyle. How can people find out more about Apex? Um, so we've got social media platforms um, which you can follow, I think I'm going to send them in so you can get links on this video and also we've got a website, it's Apex Training apextrainingperformance.com I was throwing the and there but it's not actually in the website um, so yeah it's getting in touch with me through social media, it's following the pages and then linking to the website which gives you a link to our email as well and different packages so if you can go on the website or just get in touch with me then hopefully we can get a step moving forward yeah, so follow our Instagram, apex.evolution, and then head to the website, www.apextrainingperformance.com. Well, there we are. That's the end of another episode of the Women's Rugby Show. It's been fantastic to be here today and also to get such a good insight as to what it actually takes to be a top rugby player. Thank you so much to Jade and Emma for being such great sports. Please make sure you check out the link in our profile to find out more about Apex Training and Performance and Emma Swadlow PT. But before you go, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the Women's Rugby Show across all of our social media platforms. But most importantly, please keep spreading the word about the women's game and the Women's Rugby Show. All of today's chat about pre-season has definitely got me excited for a new season ahead. So I'll be seeing you all real soon. Bye for now. Thank you.